Well, welcome back to, to part two of this video. If you haven't watched part one, I recommend going back and finding that one and watching that first to kind of make sense. So before we move on, I just thought it'd be a good idea just to recap what we're doing and where we've come from so far. Um, I was in Turkey uh, at a place I've been to many, many times, and uh, as always, uh, when you're not when you're familiar with somewhere, it's a little bit harder maybe to uh, to find new images. It can be. So I saw this uh, this building in the middle of the bay, which is used to launch these jet skis off, and thought it could have the potential to make a good shot. I decided to use a long lens. A Normally, I use a 28 or uh, 24 to 70 mil lens for most of my work, and, and I use it on about 30 to 70 mil. That's my favourite focal length. But on this one, I got out a 70 to 200 mil lens. Now, the main reason was I wanted to isolate some of the uh, things that were going on in the bay. I, but mainly, I wanted to bring these mountains in the background uh, forward into the scene to make it all compressed uh, and larger. Uh, and long lens had the effect of compressing things and making distances with uh, of images appear closer together so that was the uh, main reason but going beyond that I wanted to clear up uh, some of the clutter uh, even further and uh, also add some other elements into the scene so we basically we started off this is the background uh, it's made up of two frames so we stitched two frames together um, and then decided to do a bit of a cleanup take out some of these buildings and foreground bits and pieces um, we then um, added a new sky uh, when I say new all the elements in this image uh, were shot at the same time in the location and the great thing about that is um, you still have to obviously keep an eye on things like lighting and the direction but hopefully uh, if you shot them all sort of similar time everything will match and with the sky here uh, it literally is just a darker version of the sky I wanted to bring in so I didn't have to worry too much about the uh, fringing or anything like that when I cut the uh, mountains out the other thing we did was to add some foreground water, some extra water down the bottom here. Again, it was two images that I st stitched into a panoramic and we had to clean that up uh, as well because generally with water, they don't really um, stitch together all that well because it's moving. So you generally have to go in and clean a bit up. Now, I can't remember if I've already mentioned this. I think I did, but I'm going to mention it again. When uh, when, you sh when you're doing composite images, uh, something that people often overlook is the focus point in the image now on this picture um, I think I used quite a small aperture uh, smallish on a long lens um, and but I wanted to the main focus to be uh, on this building in the bay um, so when I moved the camera tilted the camera down to photograph the foreground water I didn't refocus I left the focus at the same point and just drop the lens downwards now, the reason for that is I don't really want uh, it to look uh, I don't want the image to go uh, sharp here to a little bit soft then to sharp again it just wouldn't look right so you have to think about these things if I wanted it all sharp then that's another matter I could perhaps you know focus at a point here and get this bit sharp and then maybe refocus again and try and get it all sharp that way but I didn't want that I wanted it to look as natural as possible so I didn't move the focus so that's where we are to date um, the other thing we discussed before we left was um, would we um, possibly take out this guy in this boat uh, I wasn't sure uh, and would we add a different uh, building here in the bay we I had some others that was shot um, a little bit closer in and uh, maybe we want to enlarge this a little bit but until we start to add elements in you just never know how it's going to pan out so that is an option uh, an option I still haven't to worked out what to do about yet but the other thing I have done um, I shot several boats or the front of boats while I was at the scene because I thought it might lend itself to just a foreground a bit of foreground interest just the uh, the front of a boat in shot um, here's one that I picked out I shot several uh, of these uh, this boat at the front of it at slightly different angles and you can see it's very very cluttered you can start to see now some of the elements in the bay here there's lots of boats and stuff going on very very busy um, so I've shot this front of this end of this boat and um, as I was discussing focus earlier the majority of the pictures I took of this boat I didn't move the focus again I allowed the boat to go slightly out of focus naturally but on this one <laughs> that I actually sold it all on this one that I actually think is a, the nicest angle 
it's whether I whether I actually focus on this one um, for for an alternative, um, I don't know. But this one seems to be quite sharp, so uh, we're going to have to address that when we bring it into Photoshop. Um, the, the masking on this, you know, masking is not the most enjoyable thing to do in Photoshop, as I'm sure you already know at, uh, uh, if you've tried it. Um, this is so cluttered, um, it's a bit of a nightmare when you first look at it. This is what I've ended up with, I'll just show you. Okay. Um, you can try, or you might, uh, to uh, to use channel masks uh, or bits of software or the Magic Wand tool. It ain't going to work, and if it does work, it's going to end up being very, very choppy. Uh, you're going to have to go in and do a lot of cleanup. So, it, with an image like this, I don't mess around, I just get the old pen tool and make a path of uh, of of the object is much much quicker um than than messing around trying to do a a, a quick selection um uh, it's better off just getting in there and and uh, just get the pen tool and just cutting this out it's time consuming it's boring as hell and uh, it's not the most fun as i said thing to do in photoshop but uh, it's the easiest way in the long run of getting a good selection as a result uh, i'm not going to take you through all that if you want to learn to use a pen tool um, there's lots of tutorials out there i might have to join you because i still after all these years of photoshop do not use the pen tool as it was meant to be used uh, so i could do with uh, do it with some point learning how to use it properly but you know it works for me uh, so that's why i probably haven't bothered so that's the selection I'm going to show you uh, how it ended up in shot as where we are at the moment okay so we brought it in I've scaled it down a little bit so we still need to do a little bit of work on this I'm going to show you how we now once you've got that pen tool and got it all cut out and um, how we can refine this uh, we still got a bit of work to do I want to bring out these bring in this shadow for the boat here on the water and um, sometimes with shadows is easier to recreate them um, but in this case because there's you know ripples on the water and stuff it's better off bringing it in I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle that and make it uh, really sort of fit into the scene properly uh, in the next part of the video so this is where we're at now um, we can start to make some more decisions um, I've scaled the boat down to what I believe is a, a reasonable size um, I'm keeping an eye on the background here um, I don't want the boat necessarily let me just move it I don't really want the boat to be cutting in to the, uh, to the horizon at an awkward angle if I bring it up too much it's gonna cut out our background and it looks a bit silly I think um, in the scene there, I think it needs to be somewhere down here. So at the moment, I've left it um, around there, uh, but we need to we need to make some decisions um, on what we're going to do with it. So we're going to uh, separate, take uh, away this water and shadow, and also this chain here. You'll notice I've, I've been quite generous in my selection. It looks like the dogs chewed it, but there's a reason for that. We can allow a little bit of blending. We need to blend it in a little bit, and also I want to bring in some of these kind of shadows on the water which it's easy to bring them in and to try and recreate them. So what we're going to do is separate them and put them on their own layer. So I'm just going to draw, I'm going to get the, the lasso tool or some selection tool and just come round here on this chain, this anchor chain, and select it. Uh, I'm going to make sure the image and not the mask is highlighted like so. Uh, Command and Control uh, C to copy, Command and Control V to paste it on its own layer. Now we've got our selection there, it's uh, slightly to the side which is not a problem. We're just going to turn it off because we need to remove the other one and we can do that by highlighting the mask, not the image but the mask. Get a brush tool with black and make sure it's a small brush tool and we just want to get rid of this one here. Then bear in mind if we have a problem we can always bring it back in quite easily so just get rid of that like so that's done okay now highlight I turn that um, chain back on get the move tool and we could just move that oops wrong one command said right uh, make sure that layers highlighted and just bring that in roughly where it's needed now, because the chain is quite dark and we want to remove some of this white, we can just change the blend mode to darken and voila, we've knocked out all the white bits and just left the chain. Let's just zoom out and have a quick look. 
so that's uh, that's done that job very quickly um, and efficiently so that's just changing a blood mode to dark and just going to highlight these two and lock them together by clicking on the chain icon down here so they don't go moving around rename that layer anchor chains just so we know what it is next thing to do is uh, something similar uh, with the water this with this shadow on the water you need to come in here and make a selection and uh, remove it um, from the scene what we need to do first before we do that is to make sure that we're happy where the boat is um, I'm not 100% happy at the moment but I think it's not going to be far off, so I think we can uh, we can proceed a bit further, uh, and by removing this water. So we'll leave it as it is for now. Hopefully, I won't be too unhappy and want to go and moving it around. Has been known. Um, so I want to come in and we just want to go along the hull of the boat. I'm going to use the pen tool for this because it's just a little bit easier. So a bit difficult to see. Sometimes it's worth just adding a quick curves or uh, levels adjustment. A temporary one so you can see what you're doing so we do that uh, so I'm going to come in and roughly come around here like so just make sure we stick quite close to the hull something like that will do and zoom out now like that so okay so in the past we can turn that into a selection and uh, we're going to make sure that the image is highlighted not the mask but the image and then we can con uh, press command or control C to copy I just wait for my computer to uh, wake up so be command or control C to copy followed by command or control V to paste and that will paste the water like we did with the anchor chain on its own layer so finally here's the water uh, above slightly skew width again uh, next we want to do is to remove it turn this one off remove it from our original layer a uh, quick way of doing that is command or control shift D that brings back the last selection and uh, we can highlight the mask get a paint bucket tool foreground set to black and just simply remove it from the original layer we can then come back in command or control D to deselect and um, we can uh, highlight that back again uh, and we just need to move this back into place somewhere around there looks good this time uh, we could go to uh, we could go to darken and that will knock out and that actually does a pretty good job already let's go one stage further uh, and that is to come down to the layer style and we can maybe just maybe just blend this in a little bit better uh, by pulling the highlight uh, slider across then uh, holding down the alter option key just to split it and what that does is just maybe just blends in the transitions on the edges here a little bit better like so somewhere around there click OK and then we can have a quick zoom in and have a look and see what that looks like and that looks pretty good yeah pretty pleased with that if, if you need, do need any clearing up just simply add a layer mask and go in and just paint him but that looks pretty good for now so uh, that's where we come from so we've got a nice realistic shadow there uh, both on the water for the boat and for the anchor chain uh, very quickly again I'm just going to highlight oh go away I'm going to highlight these and make sure that they're all chained together so they don't move uh, and I'm rename this one uh, boat shadow now the reason, uh, just in case you're not too clear, the reason I've moved and put these shadows on a separate layer is that I can use the blending modes. Obviously if they were still attached to the original boat layer, this one, we wouldn't be able to do it because it would affect the whole boat and we don't want that. So by moving these shadows and bits like that on their own layer, it gives us that little bit more control. Before we move on, um, I realised I moved, probably moved a little bit too quick on that last little bit. To get to the uh, the layer styles uh, dialog box, you need to double click next to the th to the mask icon on the layer or the thumbnail, like so, and that brings the layer style box up. So if you're not sure, that's how you uh, get to it. 
Okay, so when we were uh, working on this anchor, I noticed a bit of a problem with it, uh, with the some of the water just looked a little bit too out of focus. So I've just come in, uh, I've just highlighted the mask on here, and you'll see, uh, actually I'll bring it back a second so I'll take you through it again. Let me just uh, get rid of this brushing where I've cleaned it up. Um, so you'll see here, it's got a bit of a line here that I've obviously overlooked, and it's just it's gone a bit mushy. So I've just highlighted the mask. I've got a paintbrush tool, foreground set to black, and I've just come in and just gently painted some of that away, so it uh, so it looks a little bit more realistic and uh, a little bit sharper. So these are the things that you know don't always come to immediate light when you're working on the image, but as you progress through it, um, they do uh, they do uh, come to light, and you have to uh, uh, obviously fix them as you go along. So it's a bit of an organic process. Done a little bit of cleaning up on the water there. What I haven't done is got rid of that layer. Then we put the temporary layer in when we were cutting out the shadow for the boat. So let's just delete that because we don't need that anymore. The next stage is a little bit of a tricky one because we need these to need the anchor chain and the boat shadow to stay really in their own layers because um, obviously they're using a different blending techniques. But we do need to maybe soften this boat up a little bit. If we take a look at it, it's it's just a little bit too sharp. Okay, it goes from sharp here to slightly soft to uh, slightly sharp again, and it just looks uh, very, very um, silly. So, we need to soften it up again. So, the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to leave the boat layer on its own layer, uh, but we're going to turn it off. I'm going to turn the rest of these layers off. And I'm going to put these, the anchor chain and the boat shadow on into one layer. And I'm going to do that by adding an empty layer. As I said, I'm going to turn everything else off, apart from those two. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, uh, and with, the, with that empty layer uh, highlighted, go to the uh, Layers uh, options up here, and click on Merge Visible. That's going to make a stamp of the Anchor Chain Boat Shadow. So we're going to put that, uh, call that one Stamp, Chain, and Shadow like so. Uh, we can turn these two off now and turn the boat on and all the rest of these are the ones. Now the reason I've done that is because uh, I'm going to make the boat, turn the boat into a smart object and um, also I'm going to do the same with the this new layer we've created to soften them rather than having three different layers to all soften we're going to just use these two. So I'm going to right click uh, convert to smart object, this is for the boat and actually we'll name this layer boat in a minute because I haven't done it yet uh, boat and then also oops, uh, and now we can just turn it off a minute now we can go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we just said we just want to soften this boat up a little bit so not too much maybe just try one pixel for now somewhere around that, maybe one and a half. We can always come back, that's the beauty of having uh, a smart filter. Try 1.6 and then I'm going to turn on this new layer we created change the blend mode to darken okay so we'll come back to where we were uh, again convert to smart object and if we then, once it's done that, if we press command or control F that should apply the same filter, yep, like so. So we know that the, the this is matching what we did on the boat layer. So uh, hopefully that all makes sense to you. So now the we've softened the boat up. We can come in, have a quick look, and see if it looks a little bit better. I think it does. Just takes the edge off a little bit. We can always come back in and adjust that if we need to. Come in and highlight these, any new layers that I've created, and make sure that they're all chained together quite nicely so they don't move around. What I do want to do next is I want to darken the boat down, not necessarily the chain because the chain is in a slightly different light there, but the, the actual shadow side of this boat I think needs darkening down. Uh, a to make it look a bit more uh, realistic that it's actually sat in that particular scene uh, so we need to kind of just darken the tones down a bit and also it, at the moment it's right in your face and we don't really want it too obvious we almost want it like a silhouette just so it's, it's adding something to the picture but it's not overpowering the picture. So to do that I'm going to highlight the boat layer, I'm going to come down and add a curves adjustment 
okay now the thing is with this it's going to darken the whole image below but we can get around that so let's just let's just make a start let's just darken and just keep looking at the boat we can try and ignore the rest of the scene just look at the boat like so and darken the image click OK and uh, sometimes it's uh, when you do these adjustments uh, it's a good idea maybe to try uh, luminosity as a blend mode because sometimes you can pick up extra color it hasn't really happened uh, in in this image but uh, that's just another little tip I'll throw in to just affect the boat layer we need to right click and to uh, go down to create clipping mask and what that does it so you'll notice a little a drop down arrow it just means that it's only affecting the underlying layer not those underneath so it's only affecting the boat nothing else okay so a good little trick there rather than making masks and stuff it's a quick way of, of masking a particular layer so you can see that's just darken the picture down let me just zoom out a little bit uh, and uh, it just uh, adds what I believe is the correct tonal value for that particular image uh, within this scene. So all looking pretty good so far. So let me just close that boat layer down and just have a look at where we've come from. So I think the best thing to do now is sometimes a good idea when we're working on these images like this is to uh, save the file go make a cup of coffee and come back maybe even print it out and let's just have a live with it for a little while and, and work out what works in the image what doesn't so there's a couple of things that bug me at the moment about this image which I need to address um, do we need to take this guy out I still haven't decided on that yet do we need to enlarge this building um, I'm thinking not but uh, we need to think about that as well so I'm gonna take five minutes have a cup of coffee and we'll come back what I decided to over my nice cup of coffee was to move the boat. Uh, I wasn't entirely happy where the boat was. Um, here's before and here's after. So I've just moved it down. It's just uncluttered the backdrop a little bit and I've also moved it back a little bit. So it's uh, changed the dynamics of the picture quite a bit. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm uh, just going to do a quick, uh, quick retouch. I'm going to add a layer mask onto the boat group here. And I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, I know it, it is part of the boat, I know, but I don't like it. It's uh, fun distracted. I'm just going to come in and uh, t uh, we'll use a brush tool. It's uh, quite a small brush. I'm going to take this, uh, I don't know what it is, it's some sort of uh, thing on the front of the boat here, a pole. I'm going to take it out because uh, I don't like it. It's uh, fun distracting in the picture. And I'm just going to come in like so and just very simply remove it. Let's have a look. Okay, that's better. Okay, there's before. If I can get it up. And there's after. So I think that's improved the picture a little bit. So little things like that um, may not annoy you. They annoy me. Uh, so again, very easy to just take that out. So that's much, much better. Um, as far as the boat, um, the guy on the boat here, I'm going to leave that in. I think uh, it it's, uh, adds a little bit of something to the picture. It uh, kind of takes our eye out to the picture as well. I think it helps uh, helps uh, the composition. Uh, and bearing in mind, it's not just a boat. We've got to take all this wake out as well. So quite a bit of work. But if it's worth doing, it's worth doing. But I actually think um, he adds something to the picture. And already the picture's still quite busy. So uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to add anything else to Ian. We did mention about putting a little sailing boat. That is possible. Uh, we've got something that we can put in. But um, at the moment, I think there's enough going on in the picture uh, that we don't want to add anything else to it. But what we do need to do now is maybe move in and start to change the tonal adjustments and start highlighting the fun stuff, creating the contrast the selective contract and color and uh, first thing we can do on that front is to uh, maybe just adjust the sky and darken it down so let's highlight the new sky layer go to curves and I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast to the sky like so Let me just drag that to one side a little bit and just darken it down a little bit the other thing we can do on this is to go to the RGB channels and you, I did a video uh, a few weeks ago uh, regarding uh, making split toning and color adjustments and I did mention in that about this technique um, and uh, we can just add some selective color uh, using the curves here so I'm just going to raise the curve up here and you can see it's already gone quite red the sky and then just drag some control points down 
So it's adding a bit of a red, red glow to the bottom of the image. Okay. Uh, go to the blue channel. I'm going to add a control point in the middle. And we can also add some yellow to that. Not too much. Right, I think that's about right. So that's just added a bit of contrast and just brought the sky alive a little bit. And it, as always, we can always come back in and uh, adjust that. So there's before, there's after. So that's a very quick, uh, quick way of uh, adjusting the tone and the color and the sky. Uh, and next, we can move on to the overall image and just start bringing out some contrast. Okay, next, I'm going to make a global uh, curves layer. So I'm going to come to the top where the boat layer is. Um, around there and uh, I'll just to point out the levels uh, adjustment here uh, I'll sometimes add a levels adjustment to the top of the image um, as a like a, a check so if I hold down the alter option key and drag the highlight slider I can make sure that nothing's blowing out obviously at that point there we know that we're losing detail uh, but uh, I know from the, this histogram that we're not losing any detail there. We are here, but we wanted that boat to go quite dark. But I'm just going to bring that back a little bit. So it's just um, a little little check I can uh, turn on and off uh, as I'm working on the image to make sure that we're not uh, losing any important information. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer, and this is going to affect the whole image. And I'm just going to drag it down. I want the, I want to try and bring out some of the mood that I experienced when I was shooting this. And you know it was getting towards the end of the day, um, and uh, getting a little bit dark. So I want to bring some of that kind of atmosphere out that I remembered. I now can just come back in now with a brush tool with black. Okay, so brush with the black in the foreground, and I'm just going to paint away gently some of these areas here. Let's make a brush smaller. I just want to bring these back a little bit, a bit lighter, like so. Okay, especially the uh, the hut here and the guy, and we can make another adjustment in a minute for those. So, if I just show you the mask, just paint that away. So there's before, there's after, and uh, make sure there's no strong uh, strong transitions. And uh, if you do find you've got some strong transitions, you can always come into filter, blur. Gaussian blur and just soften some of your brush marks up a little bit, like so. Right, so there's uh, there's before, there's after. So that's just brought those the whole image down in brightness a little bit. Next, we're going to make another curves, and this time we're going to add a fair amount of uh, well, not that uh, a fair amount of contrast uh, to the picture. So we're just going to raise this up. And where we're going to add this is selectively add it to the hut here and the man on the boat. So I don't want to darken it too much. Just pin this uh, curves down the bottom here just to keep the shadows down there. And just raise this up. So I just want it to add a bit of punch and a bit of contrast. Click OK. We're now going to fill that paint bucket with white in the foreground. Fill that adjustment with black. Remember white reveals black conceals so we've now concealed that adjustment uh, but what we can do is now come in and selectively paint the adjustment into the image carefully with white so paintbrush with white and what we want to do is avoid uh, we want to obviously get the building here but we want to try and avoid um, the the hillside if we can because that will show up uh, and not look particularly good on our image so just very carefully come in and just try and highlight some of these bits and pieces of the building here like I said maybe the flags like so we're trying to avoid if we go over here look you can see exactly what's happened it creates a, a very obvious line so avoid the sea if we can and avoid the mountain that's looking pretty good. And the same with the guy here on the boat. Let's try and get a bit of this wake. And highlight him. 
And you'll see now we've added this quite strong contrast adjustment. You can see what I said earlier about picking up extra saturation. If you don't want that, just change the blend mode from normal to luminosity, and that will take away. If you watch the weight there, it'll take away that. So there's in normal, quite a strong blue. There's in luminosity. Uh, I actually quite like it. Um, I like it on the um, on the hut here. Uh, I'm not so worried about it on here, but let's just leave it in on normal blend mode for now. Okay. Just follow that weight through. So remember, you know, when when we do these adjustments, these select adjustments, the eye is drawn. It's certainly drawn to strong colours like red, which is great because the hut here is quite a red colour, um, and it's also drawn to things like brightness, contrast, sharpness. So by making these adjustments uh, with a little bit of contrast and boosting the colour there, it's going to automatically mean our viewer is going to uh, be drawn to that part of the image. And I think you can see that already. Here's before. Here's after that's made a big difference to the picture and just really highlighted that red. And you're right, the viewer's eye is really going to sort of latch onto that red colour. The mountains, um, I don't know, I might want to, I think I want to try and adjust these mountains a little bit, but I, I, I think if I do that, it's going to make the picture more busy. Let's just try it, let's just do a little test. Do another curves adjustment, a bit more contrast. Okay, like that. Uh, fill with black again. And let's just try a patch and see what it looks like. I think it's going to create quite a busy image. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I think once we finish that, it's going to start. The eye is going to start getting a bit confused. At the moment, without that on, the mountains are a little bit flat, but then they are in the distance, and there is a little bit of atmospheric haze. And they should be a little bit wishy-washy because that will also add depth to the picture. So, with that in mind, I'm not going to. I'm not going to add an adjustment for the uh, the 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 mountains in the background. I'm going to leave them slightly washed out because I think that adds to a little bit of depth to the picture. I'm just going to grab, uh, I'm just going to move my levels adjustment to the top of the stack again. It's not switched on, but uh, I can just check that again in a little while. Um, and there's my adjustment I just made. Let's name this one uh, Selective Contrast. And this one we'll just name Global Dark okay so we know what they are I'm just going to select all these three layers whoops uh, again chain them together command or control G and that puts them in a group and just call this group A D J just a bit of housekeeping so we can keep everything nice and tidy um, I now want to uh, I'm going to try and really wrap this up because it's, it's going to end up dragging on there's still quite a bit more I can do to the image but I'm going to try and just wind it up a little bit quicker um, so I'm going to add another uh, uh, curves adjustment I'm just going to darken the edges of the, of the image usual standard trick I uh, just darken the edges down so something like that and I'm going to get the elliptical marquee tool. Uh, I want to keep the centre of the image quite bright. So for starters I'll get the paint bucket tool, uh, foreground set to black to lighten that, command and control D, deselect, then I can go to filter, blur, gaussian blur. There's lots of ways of doing this. This is just one way I use. And then you just blur the hell out of it, 250 pixels like so. Just wait for that. I'm then going to change the blend mode to luminosity so we're not picking up as much colour. And I'm then going to drop the opacity down quite a bit. So that's one way of just darkening the edge of the picture down. Just again to concentrate the viewer's eye in the centre of the image. Okay. Our boat's gone a bit dark now, but I don't really care too much about that. You can still see it. It's uh, and it's not too much in your face. Uh, so we've just got to make sure that our uh, a man on the boat there isn't affected too much, I don't think he is, so that's just another little trick just to keep the viewer's uh, attention into the centre of the picture. 
So I think I'm going to have to wrap up here because uh, this is going to roll on a bit too long. There's still a bit more work I can do, but I think just giving you quite a few tips in there, um, how you can visualise a scene. You know, if I just tried to shot this on a wide-angle lens, it just wouldn't have worked. Uh, I knew there was a picture to had. I knew I wanted it to landscape, uh, and so by using a longer, longer lens and maybe combining different elements, I've managed to make uh, more of a landscape from the long lens, and also made a nice compression on the on the picture with the mountains and and this uh, floating building so uh, that about wraps it up so i hope you've enjoyed uh, the video and um, i hope to catch you on the next one cheers for watching